This is the new handheld, the Valve Steam. Wait a second. This isn't the Valve Steam Deck. This is a new contender, the Logitech Cloud. Let's take a look. Popping bottle champagnes all night, running up your mouth like it's all fine. She looking like a ah, she looking like a in a skirt tie. This is the Logitech Cloud, an Android-based console that is a cloud-based streaming device. I know. Let's unpack it. This is the Logitech Cloud. You get a 12-watt charger along with a USB A to C cable. You also get the device, which is uh, only available in white. Mmm, smell that new plastic. Let's talk about it. I think this device looks fantastic with the screen it has. I don't mind the gloss, but I definitely do mind the color scheme. I get that you're trying to make a standout handheld in a market that's full of different colors and all sorts of different shapes and objects for handhelds, but yellow, white, and black? Not my favorite, but I do have to say the device itself is light and incredibly rugged. The buttons feel fantastic, and you can tell that this device was made by people who have been making user interface devices for a long time now. Everything kind of just works. Oh, I almost forgot to make a gripe about the audio holes. The outward firing speakers face directly down. So that means whenever you're playing this and you set it on your chest, you can't hear anything. But this is a minor gripe. If you're playing with headphones, it doesn't really matter. Which is what I'd recommend. The audio's there. It's not good. The Steam Decks is very good, but that'll be a video for later. So here's where the review kind of gets interesting because this device itself isn't being marketed as a device that is going to be played under its own power. It's meant to be a streaming device, which for a streaming device, it works fairly well. Its main selling point is the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. If you have an Xbox or a computer or a PlayStation for that matter, you can stream all of the different devices to this device, which is cool, but it does come with some drawbacks. For the Xbox, the thing that's streaming your content is a computer that's in a server somewhere. For the Steam Link, that's going to be using your own computer, which gets kind of weird because you have to leave your computer on and be connected to your own Wi-Fi to have it to work. So it's essentially this device is a controller. I don't know. I wasn't a big fan of it. I didn't think it kind of had a point. PlayStation is also in the same boat for that. You have to have a PlayStation locally to stream your games from for that to work. I thought you'd be able to load up a, like, PlayStation, essentially the same thing as the Xbox Cloud. I was thinking that PlayStation would have a streaming service as well, but they don't. You can stream to your gaming device, but you can't stream past it. It's a little convoluted, but essentially the only thing that you can just load up from anywhere is the Xbox Game Pass. But you can also load up emulation, which is a whole video in and of itself. This does fairly well with emulation, but you're going to end up at around the PS2 era. You're not going to be able to play anything past that. If you'd like me to do a full video on that, please leave a comment down below and I'll dive a little bit deeper into that genre. Yeah! So the software on this device is snappy. It's good. I like how this functions. I like being able to turn it on flip into whatever games on Game Pass, play a level or two, click it back off, and it's good to go. Logitech did a fantastic job at battery management on this thing. I've only charged it once since I've received it, and I've played it for about two weeks straight now, and it, it's kind of crazy how long the battery lasts. If you play two or three games and then click it back off after like an hour of gameplay, it only takes like five to 10% of the battery. It's not really, doing very much because it's not rendering everything on the local device, it's rendering it all on the cloud. So yeah, the visuals don't look great, but I think they kind of, they tried to make up for this with the higher resolution screen. The 1920 by 1080 at 60 hertz really does make a difference. It's a little more fluid, it looks a little bit sharper, but you're also streaming games, so you're gonna have weird compression 
on the games themselves. So I kind of have a mixed bag with the, do I like it for just a standalone device? We'll get into this in the next section. So do I like this as a standalone device for the cost versus the things on the market? Well, I think it's going to depend on the user's willingness for something like this. If you have a Steam Deck already, I have no idea why you would buy one of these. That said, the lowest Steam Deck is $400. This is $350, and I guarantee you there are going to be some used ones floating around on Amazon for cheaper. They also did a sale earlier in the year for $300, if you like early back them or something. If you have a Steam Deck or any sort of handheld that already does this, or even a tablet, I would say it's mm, the, the value proposition goes down. If you only have a desktop, you do not have a laptop, this starts looking relatively attractive. Because for $350, I could stream my games from anywhere else other than my desk. Maybe you work from home, and you game at night from home, your buns aren't moving out of the chair very often. So something like this, yeah, you can game in the toilet now. Or you can game upstairs on your couch, or anywhere in your house and Wi-Fi connects to. That might be an option, because a console is 300 bucks. A cheap console. So if you even wanted to like play your games upstairs, or even run large cables and do that kind of stuff, costs going to add up quickly, and this is a cheap device. Cheap compared to a gaming computer. That might be interesting. I have honestly picked it up more times than I thought I was going to, because I like the feel of the device. The device itself works very well and quickly. It turns on instantly, because you're never turning it off, you're just quickly putting it to resume and it's an Android based tablet so it sits there barely using any power and then you're able to quickly game on it. You're able to pull up a match of whatever that's on the Xbox gaming cloud service and play quickly, which is what I really like. If I'm sitting there waiting for a turkey to cook and I don't want to go back downstairs because every 25 minutes I got to check something. Well, that's like a level of back for blood every 25 minutes. And I'm still sitting next to the turkey, so when I see it catch fire, I can put it out. I've used, what I'm saying is I've used it more than I'd like to admit. And I've used it over the Steam Deck more than I'd like to admit as well. My game turned off. So for value proposition, I would say it's a good device. If this device fits your mind and budget, go for it. I don't think you're going to have any regrets getting it because if you're an Xbox Game Pass fanatic, you're going to use the crap out of this. The only other issue is you have to be connected to half decent Wi-Fi or it's going to be a terrible time. I have gigabit Ethernet and a Wi-Fi 6 router that I'm never more than 500 feet away from. So if you have bad internet, I don't think this is uh, it's not great. But it is an interesting device that I think Logitech is... I'm glad to see Logitech right. taking hold oh, of because go. this is part of the whole right. thing. No, nope. Valve has a handheld, Logitech has a handheld, Microsoft has a Surface, Apple's got an iPad, everybody's making some sort of device to do something different, and we're getting more techie by the day. Yeah! I'm glad to see companies taking more risks on weird gadgets and stuff like this because that's what I like. So, if you'd like to see some other weird gadgets, or even more emulation videos, these are the ones for you. So take a look at those, and uh, I'll be upstairs playing on my cloud. I got a touch on the moment